Okay, so in this video, we want to do a quick review of the trigonometric function called the cosine function. So if you recall, we start with a right triangle. Let's call the angle at the base theta. And let's label the three sides A, B, C. Now with respect to theta, these three sides have special names. A is called the adjacent, B is called the opposite, C is called the hypotenuse. And if you recall by definition, cosine of theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it is A over C. And we can use the exact same argument as in the case of sine of theta to show that the cosine of theta is always the same for any similar triangle. So we can pick the simplest right triangle where the hypotenuse is equal to 1. But now if the hypotenuse is 1 and cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, well if we divide something by 1, nothing changes. So then this over 1 is simply the length of this. So therefore, the base of the triangle now is the cosine of theta, right? Cos of theta is the adjacent side over 1, so cos theta over 1 is cos theta. So now we have, just as in the case of sine of theta, where sine was the height of the right triangle with hypotenuse 1, cosine is the length of its base. So once again we can, in order to help us sketch the graph of cos of theta between 0 and 2 pi, we can help we can help ourselves out by inscribing this right triangle inside of a unit circle. And again, because we have a circle of radius 1, the intercepts are 1 and negative 1. And again, the base of our triangle, in the case where the triangle has a hypotenuse of 1, as we've just discussed, is simply cosine of theta. And now with this simple geometric picture, we can easily, as in the case of sine of theta, sketch now the graph of cos of theta fairly easily. And again, we'll go one quarter of the circle at a time. So we'll go from 0 to 2 pi, one full revolution. And the four key angles are, of course, pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. So again, let's visualize what happens to our triangle as the angle goes from 0 to pi over 2. So as the hypotenuse of our triangle starts from here and goes all the way up to here. And again, now we're following not the height of the triangle, but the base of the triangle. So when theta is 0, the hypotenuse lies flat onto the x-axis. So the triangle disappears and all we have is a line segment connecting 0 to 1. But that is exactly what cosine is. It is the base of the triangle. So here cosine when theta is 0, is ex exactly equal to 1. And now what happens? Well, as we increase the angle from 0 to pi over 2, again, the hypotenuse will start from here, go all the way up to here. Then we can see that the base will go from 1, and the base will get gradually shorter and shorter, right? Increase theta even more. Now the base is only this long. And when we reach pi over 2, we now lose our triangle for a vertical line segment. And so cosine will be equal to 0. So the cosine, the base of our triangle, as we increase theta, will decrease from 1 all the way down to 0. And now, as we go from pi over 2 to pi, well now the base is 
equal to zero, but if you just imagine another triangle here, now the base is a little bigger, but of course negative. And if you have an even larger theta, the base is even larger and negative until we reach pi, where now the triangle once again become a horizontal line segment and the base is negative one. So you see as we increase the angle from pi over two to, to pi, the base of your triangle will go from zero all the way down to negative one. And now, when we go from pi to three pi over two, well, again, the hypotenuse will go from here all the way to here. And again, imagine if you pick this point, now the base is a little less negative. Pick this point, the base is even less negative. So the base will go from negative one all the way up to here because once we reach three pi over two, once again, we lose our triangle for a vertical line segment, and it has no width, so the cos once again will be zero. So it will go, again being the base of our triangle, from negative one all the way up now to zero. And the last quarter, once we go from three pi over two up to two pi, again, you can draw say this triangle, now the base is a little bigger and positive. Increase theta, now the base is even larger. And when you reach two pi, once again, you're back to square one, where you lose your triangle for a horizontal line segment onto the x-axis, and the length of it, the base, therefore cosine, is exactly equal to one. So as you go from three pi over two to two pi, cos will increase from zero all the way up back to one. And of course now we have done a complete two pi revolution, so we have the graph of cos of theta. And as we keep increasing pi, we're gonna go around the same circle forever, so this piece here will repeat itself forever and ever and ever, and it will do the same thing in the negative angles. Again, if you take negative angles, you're going now clockwise. So we have the graph of cosine of theta, simply by remembering that in the case of a right triangle with hypotenuse one, cos is simply the length of the base of our triangle. And we can follow the change of the base of our triangle as we let theta change from zero up to two pi. And as in the case of sine of theta, cosine of theta has five key values. Cosine of zero is equal to one, and again, we'll only look at the key values between zero and pi over two, so in the first quadrant. So cosine of zero is equal to one. At pi over two, cosine is zero. And as in the case of sine, the three other key angles are pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three. So the cosine pi over six is root three over two. The cosine of pi over four is root two over two. And the cosine of pi over three is one half. And that's it.